You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Each week, Cheryl will feature and discuss the many challenges of those living with disabilities, along with the various issues that are faced by their families that are caring for them. So now, please welcome the host of Courage to Overcome, Cheryl Jennings. Welcome to BBM Global Network. This is Cheryl Jennings, your host on Courage to Overcome. Lately, we've been looking into some very interesting information that affects a lot more people in our world than we would really wish that it was true. But the last three weeks, we've talked a little bit about PTSD, and the reason is because we're learning that so many of the problems that have been associated with that, some of the information has not been right. In fact, the reason that people are even calling it PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder is changing because before long, it won't even have that D on there because it's now been classified not as, as a disease and not as a disorder. However, if you go to the VA or you go to some of these other sites that are online, it still says that this is a mental illness, which is simply not true. We're learning, though, that 70% of adults in the United States have experienced some kind of traumatic event at least once in their lives. And so that results in over 223 million people out there that could develop post-traumatic traumatic stress disorder. And of those people, at least 20% of them go on to develop PTSD. And a lot of people are really struggling with this, but they don't know what to do about it. And some of the treatments that have been offered in the past are found to not be effective. People are taught to dwell too much on the past experience and not on trying to erase those memories. They are not helped in trying to get past what's happened to them, but rather they get deeper and deeper into the situation. I thought it'd be really interesting to get to talk to two people that I know that I've recently connected with who are first responders. And the the callers that I have on here right now are two first they are first responders because of police they are some people that I want to talk to tonight because they have gone through PTSD for a long time for years and it it was something that developed over a period of time but before I get them on I want to talk just a little bit about how this is affecting our nation right now since we are having so many incidents that are being publicized on the internet, on the news 24 hours a day about some of the suicides, some of the terrorism that's happening in places, some of the mass shootings, the things that have happened at school, some of the very horrible experiences have hit many people all at once instead of just one or two at a time. Well, we know that this has always been going on for military and so many of the people that are serving our country and giving their their lives for our freedom have been subject to the this traumatic stress that once they come back home, it is very hard to go right back into being who they are. One reason I'm so aware of this is that I live in a town that is a military town, and I've known people that have struggled with PTSD. I've known some that were not helped. I've even known some that have committed suicide, and yet it was hard for us to ever understand why that would have happened because it wasn't something they were really planning on, but because 
because of so many of the nightmares and flashbacks that they were going through that we believe they really were in somewhat of a nightmare when the things happened that did happen to them and caused them to commit suicide. I know that these are very hard on families. When a fam when a person returns and they have primary PTSD, and we've learned so far that within three weeks that this secondary PTSD will happen to the person that's at home expecting them to return, like the husband or wife of the person that's been gone. These people are now going to have to readjust in their in their homes, trying to figure out who this person is that left versus who the person is that returned. We were also taught that after three weeks and the spouses get into so much conflict, it will cause what's what is called floating PTSD for the children who are watching. So all of this is to say that this problem is a bigger problem than so many that we have dealt with right now. And I want to spend a little more time trying to find out what can happen that can stop some of the problems that we are seeing in our society where people are witnessing traumatic events and then turning to have PTSD. What kind of problems or what kind of therapy or what kind of of treatment can they get that is going to help them move forward past all of this? I believe I might have one of my guests on the show. Is that true? Is Tim, are you there? Yes, Joe, I'm here. Okay. Well, I want to just introduce you as Tim, and I want you to just be able to come back in a few minutes. And there are some questions. Do you mind if I tell you that I'd like for you to kind of describe what your life was like when you had PTSD, some of the reasons why you think you've had that, and then I also want to find out what have you been able to do that has helped you to get past this? And I know we only have about a minute or so to start this, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about what made you, what kind of a career you were in, what happened that caused the PTSD for you? No problem, Cheryl. And first of all, I want to say thank you for having me on. It's an honor and a privilege to be here and to uh, to be able to share uh, my story and message with uh, your listeners. But anyway, to give you a little bit of background about myself, I was in law enforcement in the uh, Kansas City metro area from 1986 to 1994 and had served with an agency in a variety of uh, capacities and uh, spent a number of years working on the street where uh, my experience, like most of the law enforcement officers, you get to pretty much see the full beam of humanity. And unfortunately, for the most part, you're seeing the darker, more negative side of uh, you know what people are capable of, what they can do to each other, and other you know unfortunate things that uh, happen. And for me, uh, I think it was a kind of a build up over a number of years of the experiences that I had been involved in and uh, the things that I had seen and there was a particular incident in 1990 that uh, was a real deep kind of difficult one uh, that I had dealt with for years and uh, I even found out just recently back in May I still had some uh, lingering issues with that, although I had thought I had laid those to rest some years ago. And, Is that, um, let me interrupt you here. Is that kind of common that first responders do see so many things that are horrible, things that happen to other people that it can cause you to feel the stress that creates this post-traumatic stress? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the... The brain, you know, the, the human mind uh, is not really designed for, in essence, what I would call the world that we live in, especially all that, you know, the, the violence and the horror and everything else. Um, and, and to and be boy, expected to be able to... 
And that is really changing with us seeing so many things that are terrorist acts, isn't it? I want to just pause right here for a minute, and I hate to interrupt you, but we need to take a break. And when we come back, we'll just continue this little discussion here. And right now, you're listening to Courage to Overcome with Cheryl Jennings, your host, and I'm so thankful that you tuned in to listen tonight. We'll be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back. This is Cheryl Jennings, your host on Courage to Overcome. And tonight we're talking about PTSD. And I have two people that I have recently come in contact with that are first responders who develop PTSD. And it caused them to have a lot of problems being able to function for a long time. And I'm trying to get a little bit of the background before I find out what it was that helped them. Tim, I appreciate you hanging on while we were on our commercial. And you were telling us how first responders are seeing some of the worst part of humanity and it causes some of this PTSD. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about how you knew that you needed help. Yes, going back to what I was talking about before the break, in that the constant exposure and repetition to a lot of what we see going on, you know, in the world today and, you know, it's been the case, you know, the last, you know, number of decades. But that continued, repeated uh, exposure, uh, it's the way it affects the brain and the mind. It, and like I said, you know, the, uh, the brain and the mind are not designed for those kind of things on a, on a continual basis like that. And I suppose one or two things can happen, that you either... Um, you find a way to adjust to it and deal with it, which can also have negative consequences, or you, you know, like some people, become a, a you know a total wreck, a total mess, and can't function at all. Um, and I know in my case that between humor or other things that you learn to deal with it, and I know for uh, myself, a number of years it involves some very heavy drinking at times. And thank God, you know, I've gotten away from that um, because that creates health issues uh, in and of itself. But uh, I think for that, me, um, no, go ahead. Is that common that when you are trying to deal with it, you resort to drinking or drugs or something to kind of dull the pain? Yes, because what it is, uh, it's, it's a... It's just, I think it's a natural form of defense. It's a, uh, you know, a kind of a you know, built-in uh, defec- defense mechanism and a way of uh, coping with all this 
negative stuff that you know you're seeing constantly on a daily daily basis. Because if you don't find a way to cope with it or deal with it in, in a more constructive way, uh, if you just let it eat at you and eat at you, it's eventually going to destroy you. And because so I have seen long, that happen with other people. How long were you not able to function very well before you found help? Oh, I had had issues off and on over the year. I know for the, for about ten years after uh, that particular incident in 1990 up through 2000 and beyond. That uh, you know, I had flashbacks and certain trigger events, noises, especially you know, gunshots or fireworks would uh, would trigger that one particular event. You know, the you know a shooting that turned into a homicide. Uh, that I was on, and the thing was back in those days, for me, help really wasn't available, or it wasn't talked about. Right, I think and a lot of people it, just it ignored it, what was going on, didn't they? Just kind of ignore yeah. the fact that somebody's struggling. In fact, you know, a lot of times in life we'll find that somebody goes through some kind of a tough struggle. They can't take it out on the person that's causing it. And they go home. We've always said that's when you go home and kick the dog. But it's really that sometimes if you don't get help, you end up hurting people you really love. And then that cycle will repeat itself with the next generation. Is that what you found? Oh, absolutely true. I mean, uh, you know, what I've learned over the years myself and through, you know, other coaching that I have received uh, all between 2013 and uh, 2015 and then becoming involved with uh, ProLympian and meeting Karen, uh, that it's been a process of, you know, discovery and, uh, you know, kind of a, a new journey in and of itself of, finding out what was really going on because it allowed me to look back over time, you know, and connect all the dots backwards with different events in my life, you know, relationships and other things that were going on to see that, Hey, you know, I think a lot of these were related to what I had been going through and I just didn't realize it. And it was a you know, form of, um, you know, dealing with some of those things because sometimes stuff would come up and it would it would send me off into another world, you know, a completely different mood. And so, yeah, that did have an impact on my on my family. So now that you have gotten some help, tell us a little bit about what it what change it caused in your life. Just a little bit, and then I know we'll need to talk to you a little more about this. But when did you meet Karen with Prolympian Coaching that has changed your life? Well, I met him um, last month. I uh, was about the uh, middle of the latter part of May in Chicago, and uh, I was invited by uh, a friend, good friend of mine uh, that uh, we had both been, both been involved in the same coaching program uh, prior to this, and that's how we met each other, known each other for a couple of years. And she was familiar with my background and some of my experience, and... Um, she shared it with me, and I, you know, I took that leap of faith, and I said, "Well, you know, why not? Uh, you know, what have I got to lose?" And so, anyway, I went to Chicago, and not knowing really anything about this, and really not knowing what to expect. But I tell you what, from what I did experience with Karen, and that whole process, and a group of just absolutely amazing people, uh, I, I thought my life transformed just within, you know, two or three days. And, Two or three uh, days. It, it and had then, such an impact on me. I decided this is what I'm going to do. Wow, this is amazing to me, Tim, that you could struggle with this from about 1990 until just about a month or so ago. And could it could do so much harm in your life with your relationships and causing you to have other issues going on. And, and yet... To be able to get helped and get treatment is, that's a really fast change in your life, isn't it? Oh, that's the fastest I've ever seen anything happen. And I say what, that you just, from that change, um, everything since, since then, and just over the last month or so, um, it has snowballed into an opportunity um, and put me on a, a path that uh, I never saw coming. I wasn't looking for this. It found me. 
And I think God sent me on the, on the, on the right path at the right time. Wow. Well, I tell you what, I'm thankful that uh, we're finding that there is help for this and it's not going to be a long drawn out process. We're going to take another break and you're listening to Courage to Overcome. And this is a program where we focus on courage that people have to overcome something hard and then to share what it is with others so that they don't have to go through such a hard time. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. This is BBM Global Network. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back to Courage to Overcome. This is your host, Cheryl Jennings, and I am just very thankful that we have two people on that are willing to talk about some of their experiences with PTSD. Having lived in a military town, I know this is a real problem. And then having watched the news to see how many different problems have arisen, like what just happened recently in Florida, and thinking back to the school shootings that have happened in Sandy Hook and even Columbine, Columbine, Colorado years ago, we're always seeing things that are really hard for people to go through, even flooding, any kind of time that you are feeling like your life is maybe in danger or you're seeing something that is just really hard for you to deal with and maybe it feels like time slowed down. These can be some symptoms of going through having PTSD. And the good news is that we're learning that it is not as hard to treat as it used to be because we're realizing it's not a disorder. It's not a disease. It's not something that has no hope, but there is truly hope for being able to get some treatment now that won't take a long time. And for me, I just, I I can't say how thankful I am to hear about this because I know so many families have to deal with the effects of how one person deals with whatever happened in their situation that they maybe can't describe to their family and yet they're living these things in their own mind over and over and over and so what we want to do is to show that there is hope out there there is a way for this treatment to help many of these people because like I said there's an estimated of 8% of Americans and that's over 25.6 million people have PTSD at any given moment but there's just so many people that will have it 
And so the good news is that if you're listening to me and you want to contact me, there is a page that I have on BBM Global Network, and you can go to my name, Cheryl Jennings, or Courage to Overcome. Just look it up on their little calendar at 9 o'clock on Eastern Time on Mondays, and then you can go right to my link, and we'll make sure that you get help if this is something that you know you need help with. Now, Tim, before I let you go, I want to just know, uh, just tell us a brief little bit about what what you want to tell us about getting help now and how that's changed your life from what it was before as a policeman versus now. I would have to say that perhaps the biggest thing uh, compared to you know when I was in law enforcement, because I left that over 25 years ago, that uh, this is a condition that is far more well-known now and there's, you know, a lot more has been discovered about it scientifically, and that the help is there. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. Because uh, all you have to do is look around, ask somebody, and more than likely they'll be able to point you uh, in the right direction to get help. But, and, and it's not just about the help being there, but being willing to ask for it, because it's okay. You know, give, give yourself permission to get yourself healed. That's, right. the, that's the big thing I want to say. Well, and if you were in law enforcement now, knowing what you know, do you think you'd be able to deal with these traumatic situations a little bit easier to be able to know, I don't have to live that, reliving it over and over and over? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, given, given what I've been through, you know, you know, the memories that I have, and, and I can look at those now, and I don't have, I don't have that same attachment. I mean, it's, you know, it's not the memory that hurts you. It's, it's the meaning of the memory. It's the attachment that you form to it, or the memory of the memory that creates the issue for you and causes the, the uh, you know, episodic memories and the, and the looping. But, yeah, you know, if, um, if I were back in that today, uh, and knowing what I know now with the, you know, the intervention technique, and what goes on with the brain and the mind and how we separate those things out, that uh, I would make it a lot easier. Because when, when we start to feel that stress, when we feel something start to build up and become an issue, there's a quick and easy way to deal with it that we can do 24-7 if we need to. And that's the beautiful thing about this. And that's why I'm so passionate about sharing this message and what we're doing. Well, I I agree with you, and I see that, you know, if the police stations or however it's formed, if they would just be able to say, okay, now we know a way that we can help you, and all we want you to do is to ask for that treatment, I believe that we'd probably have better police force because they wouldn't feel so stressed out all the time or get into situations where they— think that something terrible is about to happen and maybe have an accidental shooting or something because it's just so difficult. And also, how many people are just undiagnosed with PTSD and they end up hurting other people, but they don't even know what's happening to themselves. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And I think if you know if this were more widely available to law enforcement today, and not just known, but I mean, put into use, you know, as, as a technique, um, they would do more to solve problems as far as community relations, you know, in terms of, you know, police brutality allegations and whatnot, or excessive use of force. It could help cut down on a lot of it because people know what's going on and they know why they're acting out the way they are. Well, I think that's right, and I hope that this program will kind of open the door for, you know, police stations, wherever you are, to do a little bit of investigating. If you want to contact me, I can get you in touch with the people that can help, or if you want to go directly to the site of ProLympianCoaching.com, it's P-R-O-L-Y-M-P-I-A-N Coaching.com. 
dot com and you will find that there is help there is information that you can ask for and if you think that this is something that you need to know more about to get help for yourself then by all means go to that and if you are a coach and you're wanting to learn how to get training to help people let us know go to that site or contact me and we'll get you in touch with them we're going to take another short break here and you are listening to Cheryl Jennings and our program is Courage to Overcome, and this is BBM Global Network, and I am so thankful that you are tuning in to listen to this program. We will be back in just a moment. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back. This is Cheryl Jennings, your host tonight on Courage to Overcome. And I am so honored to have another first responder, Pasha, who lives in Hawaii. And he has really had some experiences in his life. He was a first responder as a policeman, and he went through many years of PTSD. And I want I want Pasha to Welcome to our program, and I'd like for you just to tell us what you want us to know about your situation. Uh, thank you, Cheryl, for having me. I'm, I was a uh, police officer in Washington, D.C. during the 1980s. Uh, I hope that background noise isn't too loud. Um, and uh, I did a lot of usual cop stuff and uh, endless family disturbances and traffic accidents and traffic stops and things like that. And I had uh, very close shooting, almost shooting episodes and uh, ended up getting PTSD. Uh, he said uh, I did my fair of drinking. And um, I think that's just part of the job. I, uh, I, during the first spell, I used to come home and watch Apocalypse Now every day. I, I saw it about 200 times. Because of uh, because I recognized the unreality of my world in that movie, and uh, it was just so crazy. One of uh, you were talking earlier. One of the diagnostic criteria, as I recall, for PTSD is that you have experiences beyond the range of ordinary human experience, and that what that's what makes it. Uh, so intense. It's not just uh, ordinary experiences. It's things involving life and death, and uh, they make a very big, big impression on us. Well, and if you are in the first response, when I mean, even so many of the traffic accidents are so bad they don't even want to show it on the news. But you have to be there to see what's happened and try to find out what caused a wreck or 
you know, if there's a domestic dispute, from what I understand, that's one of the most dangerous situations to walk into because you don't know if they're going to gang up and turn on you, do you? Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, you don't know, and it does often happen. Uh, I estimate that I've been to, I think, 200 traffic accidents and uh, domestic-type situations between four and 8,000 of those. And oh. uh, emotions, run, emotions run high in those situations, and uh, they're, they're always potentially dangerous. And in an effect, an effect that people don't talk about is you're as a police officer you're always thinking about how you're going to kill these people if they turn on you when you make a traffic stop you always think about how you're going to kill everybody in the car should it be necessary it's not a necessarily violent thing but it's a self-defense protective kind of a thing and thinking about that all the time uh, has an effect on your brain i would think also, so also, I was a, a D.C. resident, so I was on duty 24 hours a day. If I walked out of my apartment, I was armed. If I went to the basement to the laundry room, I was armed. I was never unarmed outside of my place. Oh, my goodness. Well, I grew up a part of my life in Arlington, Virginia, and it was in the 60s. So I understand what you're talking about because there were some pretty rough times going on with some looting and burning and so many things that happened during that time. So I can relate to it being a tough situation to live through. But that's amazing to me that you would have to go through that many different situations of of even domestic abuse, because that's not even other things besides that, like assaults or rape or violence or something where you still have to show up for really horrible situations. Yes, and, and you didn't mention the, all the shootings and stabbings and homicides uh, of various kinds. There's um, the, That's part of what got to me in my job is there was so much violence Um it was just an unbelievable amount of violence. And, and I came up with those statistics as a way some years ago to measure what a, what I did. Because I, I didn't keep track, you know, I didn't keep track of everything I did as I was doing it. But as I looked back and I was like, oh, my God, I did a lot of police work. And uh, it took me a long time to understand what an effect it had on me because I got really closed down. And actually, there was an exciting time for about two years when uh, the PTSD kicked in and before it became a problem where I was just absolutely fearless and uh, I owned the streets where I worked and I was fearless and it was, it was a wonderful way to be. Um, finally, it was too much and I couldn't do it anymore. You so, found uh, out you were not home. really one of the superheroes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, yeah. you know, it's we're not. And those things that we see sometimes make us feel like we're stronger than we are. I, I guess this caused a lot of flat flashbacks and nightmares for you, didn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. I, I've had countless nightmares and flashbacks, all the usual kind of things, you know, hearing gunshots and uh, hearing sirens sometimes just make my heart beat fast and make me breathe hard, and, and it, it would take me back. And uh, where I live in Hawaii, I'm happy to say, uh, not long ago, I heard a siren, and for I, I live out in the country, and for one half second, I didn't know what that noise was. Oh, wow. It was oh, just, that's amazing. It was, it was <laughs> yes, it was. It was amazing. And, oh, you know, after, um, after all the violence, and uh, it, it finally got to be too much for me, and uh, I had to stop doing police work. When uh, they, 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 they put me on an inside desk job, and they were going to send me back on the street. And I, I remember very clearly on the 4th of July, 1988, being on the roof of my then-girlfriend's apartment building watching the fireworks in D.C. That, uh, I said, I can't go back. I had fought this so much it was so hard for me and i finally said she she said you know you're going to go back to the section on monday and i think it was a saturday and she said what are you going to do and i, I said you know what if they came here and were going to throw me off this roof if i didn't go back to the section i wouldn't be able to fight them they would just have to throw me off the roof i can't do this anymore that was oh. the final end for me 
Wow. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's hard to for us that have not gone through all that to realize that it can bring you to that point. And yet, you know, how many people have probably gotten there and didn't realize it and maybe resorted to some kind of violence with somebody sure. else or they're not even treated? Right. And you mentioned uh, people not knowing, not understanding. What I found a lot is people would say, why don't you just snap out of it? Why don't you just, why don't you just, why don't you just, and um, they used to get me really angry sometimes. <laughs> you don't understand. Why don't I just? It's like, there's no such thing as why don't I just. I want um, you to hold that thought into- because I want to come sure. back to that in just a moment. And we're going to take a short break. This is Courage to Overcome with Cheryl Jennings, and you're listening to BBM Global Network. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the real realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Welcome back. This is Cheryl Jennings, your host, and tonight we're interviewing a first responder named Pasha, and he has been describing how terrible some of the situations got before he realized, I can't do this anymore. And Pasha, you mentioned right before we went on break that sometimes people just said, just snap out of it to you. And I've heard that from other people about different things. Tell me how that hits you and and what does that make you think of when somebody just says, well, just snap out of it? I heard that a lot. And it used to make me angry. It used to make me doubt how I felt that, that, you know, I knew, for, for instance, I couldn't go back into, after I left the police department, I moved to Virginia, which is just across the river from Washington, and I lived there. I couldn't go back into D.C. because it felt like going back to southeast Washington where I worked. I, I worked midnight, and um, everybody knows I, Everybody knows southeast. Everybody in D.C. knows southeast, and they don't go there. It was uh, really the worst part of the city, and um, I... Going into the city felt like I was going to Southeast on a Saturday night, and it was just, it always felt dangerous no matter what. And I had a friend who wanted me to go to an art show, Mark Rothko, retrospective at the National Gallery of Art, and she understood. So I I hung her down in her Jeep and closed my eyes, and she drove me into the city, and I didn't know where I was, and hopped into the gallery, and everything was cool. She understood. But other people would say... Well, my, my aunt got married at the uh, cathedral or next to it. And, uh, you know, it's like, I don't know if I can go. Well, Pasha, it's a nice part of the city. Why don't you just go? Why don't you just go? It's easy. 
And it used to make me angry. Well, first it made me upset because I doubted my own experience. And then it made me angry. And now I just understand when people say that, that they just don't understand. And it's not really a failing on their part, and they don't mean to be mean to me. They just don't understand. And then I explain to them, you know, PTSD doesn't work like that. And I, right. I had a friend that, that I wanted to mention, my friend Pete, rest in peace. Um, I knew Pete when I was a cop, and uh, Pete was a Vietnam combat veteran, and he had PTSD from the war. And I wanted to go see fireworks, and D.C. puts on a good fireworks display on the 4th. And I tried to get Pete to come with me. This is before I had PTSD. And he said, uh, no, I don't want to go. And I tried to talk him into it. And finally he said he didn't want to go because he didn't like the noise, because it just rattled him too much, all the explosions. And, and I was one of those difficult people. I said, well, you know, just set that aside. Just come on down there. It's fireworks. We'll have a good time. We'll drink some beer and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and it actually it upset him because I was being one of those difficult people. He's like, no, I don't do that. And he got sort of sharp with me and cross with me, and I just I let it go. And now I understand what I was, uh, what I was asking him to do and how unreasonable it was because people were shooting at him. He was shooting at people. There was a lot of violence in his world. And, uh, you don't, you don't just set that aside. You know, it, it becomes a part of you, and uh, it's all very real. And I was asking him to do an unreasonable thing the way people asking me to go into D.C. were asking me to do an unreasonable thing. Well, you know, you bring up a really good point, and we just don't know what we don't know. And sometimes we say things that shouldn't be said. We're not thinking or we just don't understand what the whole situation is. And I've even talked about that with some of our families that have children with disabilities, that sometimes people say things, if they really understood what was happening, they would never say those things. But they still hurt. And so this is kind of a learning experience, being on the radio, being able to help people understand understand. It takes a lot of courage to go through some of the things that we experience in life. For you to go through PTSD and to get on the road to recovery like this, I understand it was several years that you really didn't like to get out of the house, right? Unless you were desperate. (laughs) I think you're telling me about the spam. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I, um, I... I, I try to, I've tried to explain to people what, how PTSD has affected my life. One way that, that I drive maybe less than 2,000 miles a year, and uh, now living in Hawaii, I go, I don't like going to the grocery store. I always want to go to the big store, the food land, but that's like 20 miles away, and um, I end up going to the closer place, the Malama Market. That's only seven miles but I don't like going. I don't like going anywhere. My car's a little unreliable, and I just don't feel safe. And um, I, I uh, spam is the national food of Hawaii. I've actually developed a taste for it. I, I try to keep a supply of canned food for a hurricane, and uh, I run out of groceries, and I, it's like I don't want to go to the store. And then I start eating the spam, and uh, actually I invented a wonderful recipe with it. Um, started eating spam, the canned corned beef, and the frozen vegetables. And when they run out of spam, then I, I really have to go to the store because finally my hunger overcomes my uh, my anxiety, and I go to the store. So, how long ago did you get help that really worked? How long ago was it? Well, I've gotten a lot of help over the years. I've done a lot of talk therapy and some EMDR and some other things, and and they helped some. But uh, Friday was six weeks ago that I had uh, an appointment with Karen, and um, that really, truly, it's, it's, it's totally fair to say that appointment uh, changed, uh, is changing my life. Oh, I tell you, I I love knowing this because I've interviewed her, and for people to know, she understands exactly what to do to help you get past this. I want to just stop right here and give the way to reach her again because I am so impressed with what is happening. It's Pro Olympian, P R O L Y M P I A N. 
coaching.com and just tell Karen or send a note to Karen at prolympian.coaching and tell her you heard the radio program. You want to get in touch with her to find the help or whatever you need. I am going to come back and we'll have just a few words before we end tonight, but would you stay with us for one more commercial? This is Cheryl Jennings and our program is Courage to Overcome and we will be right back with some closing remarks. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com. Dot com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. This is Cheryl Jennings on Courage to Overcome. And tonight you've been listening to two people who have been amazing in teaching us that PTSD couldn't be a thing of the past when we learn how to deal with it correctly. And like I said at the very beginning of the program, for so long people thought it was a disease that you couldn't get over or they thought it was just some kind of a disorder, a mental illness. In fact, it's still listed that way on the VA page. But they're learning so much more about this that even the information that we've gotten since 2016 in January, World Health and UNICEF and some of them have recognized that there is a treatment that doesn't take long to help people understand how to help themselves when they are struggling with PTSD. And this is so important because we have so many people that are now witnesses to many traumatic events. They've had problems in their family that were very life-threatening, or they've witnessed school shootings or mass shootings like we've got like we've never had before in our lives that are happening more and more. There are so many terrorist acts that are being played over and over and over 24 seven on the news stations. So we're getting a lot of people who are troubled. They're having nightmares. They're having recurring dreams of things going round and round. Like you just can't get rid of it. Well, the good news is there is hope for you. And if you want to get help, or if you're interested in learning how to be a coach to help others, I want you to contact me because we are really wanting to reach out and to change our world. You know, I, I'm always talking about the courage it takes in our families to overcome some kind of a problem with disabilities and caring for parents and learning to be kind to people that we go out and we're around that we don't know, not to judge people based on a disability, but rather to see them as real human beings who love to be talked to just like you and I do in a very calm and kind way. We have so many children that are not allowed to grow up and have that innocent time in childhood like we once did. We're always afraid to turn loose of them because somebody might get them on a school ground or after school or something. We live in a different society than I grew up in. And I am am thinking that if we can just 
work together in a big movement to make the world kinder and gentler, that if the more of us that want to do that, that really work together on this, the more that can happen. But it's going to take some work. It's going to take changing attitudes. And I've had Pasha and Tim on tonight telling us how bad life was when they had to experience so many things. But now to get some relief just a few weeks ago. Pasha, I know you're still on there. Tell us what you've been doing the last week or two. Um, I've done a lot. I, I've had the least PT. I, I'm not all the way better yet, but I'm I'm a zillion times better than I was six weeks ago. And I, uh, one, one. Well, if you only went 2,000 miles in a year, uh, and now you're traveling, I know you're better. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, <laughs> Karen, Karen invited me to the Chicago training and she said, I think you would be good at this. And, and now I'm becoming a, a pro Olympian coach. But she said, come to Chicago next week. And and I I said yeah okay right I I don't even go to the grocery store and it's only seven miles away I'm not going to Chicago <laughs> that, that was on a Friday and on Tuesday I left Hawaii for Chicago and then since I was so close to the East Coast where I grew up um, I I went to the East Coast to visit family and friends and um, I went what I think one thing people can relate to that I did a couple of weeks ago I went, met a woman on the internet and I went on a blind date which I think is uh, is pretty difficult for a lot of people, even people without PTSD. And uh, my anxiety level was like 4%. Okay. Well, was, that is so something simple. that I know you couldn't have done very long ago. And I am so glad that you were able to come on and give us your story tonight and to tell us how life has changed for you. If anyone's listening that is interested in more information, I've got a page on BBM Global Network. My name is Cheryl Jennings. You can look up the program, Courage to Overcome. Send me an email. Or if you want to go to ProLympianCoaching.com, you want some information, you want help, I know this is a program that you're going to want to go back and listen to over and over and share it with those you know. Don't forget, you can listen to all of our previous programs by going on that site. I thank you so much for joining with us tonight, and I just want to let you know that next week is a holiday, so the programs will not be aired on that day. It's not a mistake, so I'm going to look for you to return in two weeks. Thank you for tuning in to Courage to Overcome. I am Cheryl Jennings, your host, and I am always excited to have you be part of our program. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Be it Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, or autism. Listen each week for an informative look into the lives of those challenged by these and other disabilities today on the next episode of Cheryl Jennings' Courage to Overcome. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.